Hi, this is Josh from MYOB. This video is an overview of the customization functions in MYOB Advanced. MYOB Advanced provides the ability to customize screen designs, including the ability to add different types of controls. This capability allows you to quickly update forms to match your existing business processes. Any changes you make are instantly implemented for everybody without client software updates. In this video, we'll see how to customize the existing purchase orders screen by adding a button, a tab, controls, and various data elements using the customization web tools available from the customization dropdown. All of the information that we add will become immediately available to workflow, security, and reporting tools. Before we begin, the first point to note is that in order to have access to the customization dropdown, the user you're logged in as must have been assigned the customizer role. The first thing we'll do is create a customization project. This project stores all of the changes we'll make to the database, the business logic, screen designs, reports, and so on. And because they're all stored in one record, it's easy to package and export the customization changes for use on other sites, as we'll see later. From the customization dropdown, click on Select Project, and then New. We'll enter a name for this project and then click OK. Now we can begin making customizations. Let's start by adding a simple button to the summary area underneath the vendor reference here. This button can open a web page with a currency conversion service. To do this, select Inspect Element from the customization dropdown, then click on the summary area. You can also hold down Ctrl and Alt and click on an element to inspect its properties. Click Customize to open the Customization Manager. This is the main interface for making customizations. You can see that we're now editing the purchase orders form. All of the elements of this form are displayed here. To add a new button, first we'll locate the vendor reference property that we want to add it under. Then go to Add Controls, find the button control, and simply drag it underneath the vendor reference. Now we can select this button, go to its properties, and give it a name. set its width, and by entering a value into this navigate URL property, we can set it to open the currency converter web page when it's clicked. We can save our changes here, but customizations don't appear on the site until they're published. We can select publish current project from the publish menu, although if I go to multiple projects, we can see all of the customization projects in the system. I can select this one and click publish, then once the compilation is complete, click Publish again, and we'll see that if I close the Customization Manager, and then refresh the Purchase Orders screen, our new button has appeared, and we can click on it to open the URL that we specified. Now let's add a new tab to this screen. Again, we select Inspect Element from the Customization dropdown. This time we'll click on this tab bar, and then choose Customize to open the Customization Manager. Because we opened this window by inspecting the tab element, that is the element that is displayed by default. To add a new tab, we'll go to Add Controls, and then drag a tab item control onto the existing tab. Now we can click Save. We'll want to give this tab item a descriptive name, so to do this again we click on the item, click on Properties, and then go to the text property and give it a name. We can save that again, and again we'll want to publish the project to make the tab available. Now that we've added the new tab, we can add new fields to appear on it. With the tab selected, we go to Add Data Fields, and click New Field to add a new field. On the Create New Field window, we enter a name for the field, this is its name in the database. Note that after you enter the name, it's prefixed with USR to designate that it's a user-created field. This stops the form being overwritten when a new release is published. Customizations are stored separately from the core logic, so they're not affected by core updates. Next, we can give it a display name to appear in the UI. We'll leave the storage type at DB table column to bind the field to the database. Finally, we can choose the type of data that the field will contain. We'll leave that at string. 
and how long the data can be. Click OK and the new field is added. And you can see it on the Custom tab. We can now repeat the process to add the other fields that we want. Once all of the fields we need have been added, we'll need to publish the project again. Having published the project with new data fields, the database schema changes we've just made now appear under Data Access. The Data Access layer in MYOB Advanced is maintained as a set of Data Access classes, which wrap data from database tables. We can edit this to set up the UI controls that will be used to enter values for the new fields. So clicking on this entry shows our new fields. In this example, we want that shipping status field to be a drop-down with four possible values. We can set this up by setting the field attributes here. Attributes are commonly used to define data field types and UI field configuration, to set default values for controls, to set up parent-child relationships between data access classes, to perform calculations, and much more. For the shipping status field, we'll add attributes that set it up as a drop-down list or string list, We'll specify the available values and their display names, and set a default value. I just pasted the code in here. You can look in the MYOB Advanced Help Wiki for full information on the syntax for the string list attribute. Let's save this change, then go back to customizing the purchase order screen to add the UI controls. As we saw before, our new fields are listed on the Add Data Fields tab under Custom. Here we can first of all set the shipping status field to a combo control, then select all of the new fields and click Create Controls. Controls for each field appear under the new tab item. We can drag and drop to rearrange them. If we save now and then publish, the controls will be available on the purchase order screen. Here's the customized purchase order screen. We can see the new tab with the new controls on it, but they're not laid out very well. We can improve the appearance of our new controls by editing their layout rules. Let's open the customization manager again. This time I'll hold down Ctrl and Alt and click on the tab. On the Add Controls tab here, we can see a list of layout rules. Layout rules are additive. The system applies layout rules sequentially according to the most recent rule encountered. So we can add a column and group the new controls under it, and any layout rules we add for the column will apply to the controls, unless we override them by adding rules directly to a control. So you'll see I can drag a column onto the shipping status tab, and all of the fields are automatically grouped underneath it. Having added all the fields to a column, we can then edit its properties to set its width. You can enter a value in pixels, or use one of the predefined values. I'll enter M for medium, which equates to 250 pixels. You can find a list of the available values in the help wiki. Now when we save and publish the changes, we'll see that the controls are laid out nicely. And here's the new tab with the layout rules applied. We can see they are arranged better and the length of this one is now more appropriate. I can enter values into any of these fields, and we can see that the shipping status dropdown contains the options that we set up earlier. The presentation layer in MYOB Advanced, which contains the web forms and API, is completely declarative and contains no business logic. If you want to add additional business logic for the new fields, you can easily do that by adding a handler for the required fields on the Event tab for the specific field. The new fields we added are fully integrated into the system. Any automation steps that apply to the screen where we've added fields also apply to the new fields. The fields we created are also immediately available to all of the reporting tools. For example, here I've set up a generic inquiry that selects purchase orders. If I go to the Results grid, and look at the various fields that are available for selection, you can see that the fields we added are available for selection in the results grid. This means that when the inquiry is run, any values entered for the new fields can be displayed.
As a final point, let's take a closer look at how the various customizations we set up can be managed. The Publish Customization screen that we saw in the Customization Manager is also available in the Customization module under System. This screen lets you publish or roll back some or all customization projects. Again, to be able to access this customization module, the logged in user must have been assigned the customizer role. All customization projects are listed here, and any that have already been published have this Published box ticked. You can select one or more projects and then publish them from here. You can also unpublish to roll back the projects and remove their customizations from the system. Finally, projects can be exported as a deployment package that can then be imported and published on another site. And that concludes our overview of the customization features in MYOB Advanced. Thanks for watching.